I spent my entire life calling this thing, this kind of thing, a thermos. But it's actually not called a thermos. Do you know what it's called? It is called a vacuum flask. Do you know when I learned that it's called a vacuum flask? Today, about 10 minutes ago. I never knew that before. And I would bet that if you asked 100 native English speakers, especially American native English speakers, what is this thing called? They will say thermos, not vacuum flask. The word thermos, there it is, the word thermos, thermos, is actually the brand. But again, most people know this kind of thing, even if it's not this brand, as a thermos. Hmm, that's very interesting. This is called brand replacement, where a brand name becomes so well known that people start calling it by the brand name rather than the original name. And I'm going to share in this video five of these with you. That is five examples of brand replacement that Americans use all the time. And at the end, I'm going to share one that British people use, which Americans don't use. I'm also going to use one advanced vocabulary word three times throughout this video. So see if you can catch it. And if you do, leave it in the comments. By the way, my name is Luke. And for the last 10 years, I've been helping English learners around the world improve their English speaking skills. And I hope I can help you too. Now, if there are any examples of brand replacement in your native language, please leave those in the comments. I'm just curious. And if you enjoy the video, give it a like and subscribe. Okay, let's get into it. Number one, Kleenex for tissue. You may have heard Americans ask for a Kleenex instead of asking for a tissue. Now, this is not used to ask for toilet paper or paper towels. It's not used to ask for baby wipes or any other type of paper. It is only used when you want a tissue to talk about tissue. Maybe you need one to blow your nose. Hand me a tissue, my nose is running. I've started using this one less because my wife is Chinese and she had always used the word tissue. So rather than learning from me, I kind of learned from her on this one. Number two, Google as a verb to replace search. Searching something on Google is such a common thing to do that eventually we just started saying Google something. And this started a long time ago and we still do it. When you need to search for information, it doesn't really matter where you do it. Maybe you do it on Bing or somewhere else. Well, generally you can just say Google it. After doing some Googling, I realized my movie idea wasn't actually new or that original. Now you can still say search, but I would say that Google is even more common when you're looking for stuff online, whether that's restaurant recommendations or information or whatever. Number three, Band-Aid for adhesive bandages. When someone asks for a Band-Aid, they're often not asking for a specific brand, but any adhesive bandage. But trust me, you will never hear anybody say adhesive bandage. I'm not exactly sure how common this is around the world, but if you're speaking with any American, you can ask for a Band-Aid. Quick, give me a Band-Aid. I just cut my finger. Number four, Q-tips for cotton swabs. I have been using this one a lot recently with a newborn baby. There are many things that you need to do with a Q-tip when you have a newborn baby. Now, for tissues, my wife won. I used to say Kleenex, now I say a tissue. She kind of won that battle. But 
For this one, I have one. She now says Q-tips when she needs to clean boogers out of Pymander's nose or, or whatever. So this is just, uh, it's just one of the things about marriage. You compromise, it's, it's a give and a take. I say tissues, she says Q-tips. Hey, can you bring me a Q-tip from the second shelf next to the counter? Xerox for photocopy. I would say that this one is getting a little less popular. It used to be pretty ubiquitous. Now, when you need to make a photocopy, you could say Xerox or photocopy, and I think people will know what you mean. So you can use either one. I tend to use both. I need to run to the library to Xerox these immigration documents. So those are five examples of brand replacement that Americans use every day. And here is one that Brits use, which Americans don't use, Hoover. Now that's Hoover to mean vacuum or vacuum cleaner. So it could be the verb or the noun. We do have the brand Hoover for vacuum cleaners, but maybe they never became ubiquitous enough to replace the word vacuum, as in, it takes me about an hour to vacuum the house, instead of how British people might say it, it takes me about an hour to hoover the house, no matter which type of vacuum cleaner you have. So that's it. Just to wrap up, understanding these brand replacement words is an important part of learning English. It blends in a cultural understanding that can add depth to your knowledge of the language. So keep an eye out for other examples of brand replacement. There are a few others that I didn't mention that are pretty interesting in my opinion. And again, let me know if you have any examples of interesting brand replacement words in your native language. Leave those in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to see future videos. Also, get a free English course in the links in the description. And I will see you in the next one.